what is up everyone i hope all of you are doing great and today i have another question and this question was requested by one of my viewer in the last video so this is a very simple question so let's solve it and uh, let me go through the question very quickly so there are two identical metallic discs a and b each of radius r okay so there are two discs each of radius r as you can see in the diagram connected coaxially uh, the disc and the shafts are electrically connected with the help of conducting wires and sliding contacts as shown in the figure. So, the shafts are connected by a conducting wire and even the discs are connected by a conducting wire. Okay, a uniform magnetic field of induction B is established everywhere perpendicular to the plane of the disc. So, there is uniform magnetic field B established perpendicular to the plane of the disc. Assume the shafts and the disc to be perfectly conducting and all the resistance that is equal to capital R is concentrated in the connecting wires. Okay, Now, the shafts and the discs to be perfectly conducting and all the resistance is equal to capital R is concentrated in the connecting wire. So, as it is said that all the resistance are connected in this wire only. Okay, So, if you draw the diagram once again it would look like uh, I mean here is disk A here is here would be disk B and this connecting wire will have all the resistance R ok now uh, 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 ok the shafts in the disk uh, the disk a is driven by a motor and the disc B is connected to a mechanical load of constant torque. Okay, so this is driven by a motor. I guess the motor is producing a constant angular velocity omega A on disc A and this is connected by a load of constant torque tau. Okay, so there is a constant torque tau always acting on disc B. Now, how does the efficiency of power transfer from disk A to disk B depend on the angular speed of omega B? Now, we are considering that the disk B is rotating with a constant angular velocity of omega B. That means some kind of power to make it rotate with a constant angular velocity, some kind of power must be transferred from disk A to disk B. Okay. Now, as some external machine is trying to rotate disk A. So, of course, in the presence of magnetic field, the disk A will produce an induced EMF. And we know whenever a conducting disk, whenever a conducting disk is rotating with constant angular velocity omega, in presence of a perpendicular magnetic field, there will be a potential difference produced between the center and the circumference and that potential difference will be half b omega times radius square ok so this is a very basic thing uh, very beginner thing for electromagnetic induction you can go through any uh, high school book you can get this derivation so I am not wasting my time with all this so, this is the potential difference that will be produced between the center and the circumference. Now, if we look properly that if potential of this shaft is 0, let us consider, then potential at this point will be half b omega a times r square. And uh, if this potential is 0, this potential will also be 0. Okay. And if this is 0, then the potential on the circumference of disk B will be half B omega B radius square. Okay. Now, the simplified circuit would look something like this. This is radius R. Potential is half B omega A R square will be half b omega b r square ok and the current is going from here to here ok the power input 
that is the power delivered by disk A will be V into I okay, or V A into I and the power output or the mm, that means the power received by disk uh, B will be V B times I. So, the power transfer efficiency that is P output by P input will be V I divided by sorry V A I divided by V B I. Okay. So, V A divided by V B oops sorry I made a mistake here p output by p input that would be v b times i divided by v a times i. So, v b divided by v a. Okay. Now, we know v b is equal to half b omega b radius square divided by half b omega a radius square. So, that gives you omega b divided by omega a. Now, we already know the value of we already know that omega b is given in the question, but we need to find out omega a okay, as a function of omega b. Now, if you watch carefully that uh, the power received by this disk okay, is needed to overcome the power that is being wasted by this torque. So, power received by that disk is omega b I am sorry power received is v b times i and the power wasted is and that is the power we needed to overcome is tau times omega b and v b equals to sorry v b into i is nothing but the current here and it is nothing but v a minus v b divided by r. So, V a minus V b divided by r equals to tau times omega b. V b is half b omega b r square times half b omega b minus omega a divided by r times r square equals to tau times omega b. Simplifying this we get omega a minus omega b I'm sorry here it will be omega a minus omega b because v a minus v b is here. So, omega a minus omega b equals to 4 pi r b square r to the power 4 that gives you omega a equals to omega b plus 4 pi r divided by b square r to the power 4. Now, we have got omega in the form of omega b. Now, we just need to put it here. So, then we will get our final equation my final result. So, the efficiency that is omega b divided by omega a equals to omega b divided by omega b plus 4 pi r divided by b square r to the power 4. So, this is our final answer. Let me go through the solution once again. So, basically we just need to know that a rotating conducting disk creates a potential difference between the center and the circumference and we just need to uh, visualize this whole structure and we need to use this concept that uh, if you are connecting this by a zero resistance wire the, the potential at this point and this point will be same. So, we have considered here as 0 then here it will also be 0 and so these potential on the circumference of A and B according to their angular velocities that is omega A and omega B will be half B omega A R square and half B omega B r square. Now, if you just simplify this whole thing into an electrical circuit, it would look like this. So, there is a point A of potential this much connected by a resistance and a point B of potential 
this much and we need to find out the efficiency so efficiency formula is power output divided by power input power output is this much power input is this much so you just need to divide and use the concepts here i hope i have explained all the things and i hope you found this video helpful thank you